Hi everyone, this is a viewer requested um, Oracle review. This is a review of the deck The Wisdom of Avalon Oracle Cards by Colette Baron Reed. Um, if you have watched any of my previous videos or you're a subscriber, then you know that I'm a huge fan of Colette Baron Reed, especially her Oracle cards. I really, really love them and I use them quite often for myself and for clients as well. Um, but for some reason I'd forgotten to review this deck and someone, a viewer, sent me a, a message requesting that I do this and so I'm really happy that you didn't remind me. Thank you so much. And um, this is going to be my review. So this is a 52 card deck um, and it's based on the uh, spirits and energies of the Wisdom of Avalon. So it, it holds um, an archetypal symbolism but also um, a feminine archetypal symbolism as well. Um, you know, when you think of Avalon, a lot of times we think of of, uh, of the great feminine power and magicians that, that were associated with that, sorceresses and things like that. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I was really excited about this deck and very happy to get it. Um, this is the back of the deck. The cards are the typical Hay House size, like the same size as Dorian Virtue's decks. So it's a really nice size. Um, and again, I love the backing. The card quality is good, just like Hay Houses usually are. I have no complaints about Hay House um, card quality, card stock quality, at least with the decks that I have. Um, the artist, which I believe that there are like two different artists, I think, with this deck, um, their artwork is great in this. I really like it. No, I don't have any real complaints about that. Um, let me see if I can find. I don't think they say who illustrated it. Perhaps it's somewhere in here, but anyhow, I can't find it right now. Um, and the deck was made in 2007. So again, 52 card deck. Um, and it's set up a little bit differently. So you do want to pay attention and actually read the guidebook that comes with the deck. It's a typical Hay House guidebook. You know, pretty much a little bit smaller than the cards. Um, it's 108 pages long. But it's divided into sections. Um, and the first section is the animal... Um, no, wait, I'm sorry. The first section is not the animal guides. The first section is the messengers of Avalon. The next section is the animal guides of Avalon. Then we have the guides of fairy. And that's the shortest section. There are only four. And then we have the sacred journey markers. So if you read the reviews online for this deck, a lot of people complain about the sacred journey markers. They say that it's the same image represented over and over again. That is not true. They are images and scenes of wildlife and nature. Not wildlife, I'm sorry, nature. Um, and they are different scenes of nature, but there are no humans or animals or things like that. There are symbols in each image. And you can see this is one of them. This is a sacred journey marker card. And there's the symbol above the words letting go. And then the symbol is repeated on the stone near the water. She very clearly has written on the top of each one, like what section they're in. So you know, there's a sacred journey marker. So you know that this is one of those that's attached to that section. And that grouping of energies and um, is with that energetic field. So I think that she very clearly marks that they are not the same image represented over and over again. They're different images. And let me just prove that to you. Here's fear. That's a different image than letting go. Here's protection. A different image than letting go. So if you're considering purchasing this deck and you've read those reviews on Amazon um, or wherever you're looking to purchase it, that's not true. It's not the same image. And over half the deck is not the Sacred Journey markers. Um, the Sacred Journey markers go from card number 32 to 52. And um, I will tell you that when I draw them in my readings, they in no way um, speak less to me than the cards with animals and different humans drawn on them and things like that. So I don't really understand why there was that complaint because it wasn't the case at all. Um, and as usual for Colette's decks, 
besides the sacred journey markers who just have a keyword, um, for instance, this is the Animal Guides of Avalon, the dog, there are keywords listed. Loyalty, sincerity, and unconditional love. So you get your keywords just like you usually do, especially with Hay House decks. Um, and that's a great thing. I'm going to go ahead and show you my favorite cards from the deck, the cards that I really, really liked. And I actually don't have any that I disliked in this deck. Um, these are just the ones that really stood out to me that I that I really, really liked. In fact, um, I think artwork-wise, I, I almost like this deck better than um, Wisdom of the Hidden Realms. I know, and I really love that deck, but... I mean, it's different because that's photorealism and this is more art, um, illustration and other, you know, things like that. But I really, really like this deck. So let me show you the cards that I like. Letting Go is one of them, which I just showed you. The Water Fairy. She's one of the guides of fairy feelings and emotions. The Animal Guides are incredible. I love them. I love the illustrations for them in this deck. This is the Animal Guides of Avalon, the Bee. Luck, Industriousness, and Sweet Victory. The Swan, Transformation, Trusting Psychic Gifts. And again, you see clearly marked Animal Guides of Avalon. They have different borders, so they that lets you know too. Different colors in the borders. Animal Guides of Avalon, the Owl, Deception and Wisdom. This is an amazing. You guys know how much I love owls. I, I love that card. Here's the Wind Fairy, another guide, thoughts, words, and intellectual analysis. And the Dragon, power and strength. I love that image. Oh, I'm sorry. The authors, um, the artists are listed on each card. So we've got Lippincott and Garner. Here's the Frog, cleaning house, releasing emotional baggage. The Lady of the Lake, Absolute Truth, Courage, Self-Respect, and Responsibility. This is the image that's on the deck, um, the guidebook, and it's come. It's the image that's on the box that comes with the deck. I purchased this deck um, a couple years ago now, so I don't have that box anymore because I've moved since then and you know was reducing what I didn't need to carry, you know, bring with me to the new house. Here's the High Priestess, Discernment, Presence, Prophecy, and Vision. Another sacred journey marker, this one's wealth. I just really like the trees on this one. Here's a messenger of Avalon, and this is that first section in the deck, and this is the Merlin. Alchemy, justice, and balance. Pretty much any time there's an owl on. I mean, a dragon or an owl, I'm, I'm loving it. Here's the raven, magic, coincidence, and synchronistic events. Love this. The serpent, knowledge and healing. The horse, accepting help from another, delegating authority. And the eagle, spirit, integrity, connection to the angelic realm. So, as you can see, the illustrations are really beautiful. Um, I didn't, the messengers of Avalon at the beginning, I like the illustrations, I'm not in love with them, so I didn't choose a lot from that for you, but there's another one so you can take a look at that. Here's the bard. So you can see that there are the archetypes, there are animal energies, and there's also the earth energy of nature itself. So I think that it really um, weaves together very seamlessly and beautifully as a deck that's representing Avalon. And I will tell you that it's a very, very accurate deck. Um, and it usually gives me answers that I don't always want to hear. So when I'm having a difficult uh, situation or issue and I'm looking for some insight or I need some advice um, I need to hear my higher self a little bit more than perhaps I'm open to listening to at the time this deck is really clear and really honest with me and uh, kind of tells me it like it is and sometimes I don't want to hear that but I need always need to so I'm always very appreciative of this deck I do use this deck for clients, um, but again, I choose the decks intuitively before our sessions, so um, it, 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 it's a special client that ends up getting this deck. This deck doesn't show up for everybody, um, and I think it works. It chooses to work with me a lot, which I really appreciate. Um, so I, I really like this deck. Like I said, it's a very honest deck and really clear. The answers are very clear with this deck. There is one reading in here that I... Um, one spread in here that I really like, and I want to share that with you. 
it's one of the spreads I first started working with when I first started working with cards. If I can find it in here, where do I find it? It's the five card spread. Oh, okay, she doesn't have a picture. She doesn't have an illustration. So this is what she says. Again, shuffle the cards, cut the deck into five separate piles, which you don't have to do that part. But with your writing hand, choose five cards, one from each pile, and place them down from left to right. Flip each card over and read the keywords, then look up the full meanings in the guidebook. Here are the meanings for each position from left to right. Current, situ current situation. Your expectations is the second. Hidden influences is the third. Advice is the fourth. And outcome. So I like this spread. I don't follow all her advice about you know how to set it up or what to do, but I like the positions for the cards, and I really like the advice card. Um, the advice card and the hidden influences card are really helpful. So if you're looking for a spread to tr to try with this deck or with another deck, um, it's a great starter spread, and it helps you to um, just kind of experience different meanings for different positions in the spread instead of your typical uh, past, present, future, mind, body, spirit. Um, you know, basic setup for spreads. So it kind of helps you branch out a little bit if you're just starting with spreads. It's a really great spread. Um, and the guidebook is very clear. Um, I have no complaints about the guidebook. And I have no complaints about this deck. I really love this deck. In fact, um, this one and the map are really close as my absolute favorite Clet Baron Reed decks. Um, I think they're my top two, definitely. And it's, it's a tie. It's hard for me to choose depending on what mood I'm in, whether the map or um, the enchanted map, I mean. Right? The map, the enchanted map, you know what I mean. Her, her, one of her newer decks or the Wisdom of Avalon deck is my favorite. So I hope that this video wasn't too rambly for you. Um, and I hope that if you're considering purchasing this deck, um, you, this video helps you to do that. And if you just want to know what I thought of it, I hope that I've been clear enough. I love this deck. It's amazing. It's very honest and quite clear. Um, and it works really well as uh, clarifying cards for uh, tarot readings as well. It works very well with tarot. The archetypes kind of blend very seamlessly together, I found anyhow for myself in, in readings. So thank you for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.